what are the rights of a woman or a daughter in respect of properties that are belonging to a hindu family is she entitled to property in all situations are there situations in which she is not entitled to property that belongs to a hindu family those are the questions that we're going to be talking about in this video my name is ramana reddy and i am a practicing lawyer in the high court of telangana on this channel i help you by simplifying complex legal concepts good tips tricks and general legal information make sure you hit the subscribe button below before we talk about daughter's rights in a hindu family let us first discuss what is the background in which all the entire discussion of daughter's rights is happening so we attained our independence in the year 1947 at that particular point of time there were different schools of hindu law that were being followed in different parts of the country and different ways in which property would devolve in different members to different members of the families so for example in the in the west bengal area they used to be called a school called the daya bhaga system in the, in other parts of the country there was another school called the mitakshara system so in the year 1956 the indian legislature took into account all these different practices that were followed across the country and they passed a law called the hindu succession act 1956 through which they laid down a uniform set of rules to bring to bring clarity as to how property is devolved for you know from one person to another person in a hindu family so that is basically the background in which the entire discussion of daughter's rights is happening the hindu succession act applies to hindus buddhists sikhs and jains to these four categories and the hindu succession act importantly bifurcates property into two categories one is ancestral property the other is self acquired property now what is ancestral property ancestral property is property that is passed down from one generation to another generation for a property to qualify as ancestral property it has to come down four generations so it has to come down from the father son grandson and the son of the grandson if a property comes down four generations then that is considered to be ancestral property now there's always a practical problem because land records may not go back four generations but if you're basically able to show that the property was within the family and it had come down from one generation to another generation you will be able to show that that is ancestral property on the other hand you have self acquired property self acquired property is property that is basically earned by a particular person during his lifetime or was gifted to him but basically he did not get it through the joint family so let's take an example if there is a father mother son daughter let's say the father passed away in the year 2000 and he has you know and he was a businessman and he worked hard and he was intelligent in business and he was able to purchase a hundred properties now in that situation a daughter will not be able to claim a right over the properties of the father in so far as they are self acquired properties because he acquired them through himself he did not get it through the joint family or we'll take another case let's say the father is not a businessman let's say the father's friend is a businessman and the father's friend is you know was generous enough and the father and the father's friend has gifted a particular piece of property to the father and and the father now is the owner of that particular piece of property so the daughter cannot say that you know give me a right in that because that again is not a part of ancestral property and the father is free to do what he wishes with it he is you know he can sell it he can uh you know and give it to charity he can gift it to somebody else that's entirely up to him because that is self acquired property so the entire discussion of daughter's rights will only apply in so far as ancestral property is concerned it will not apply to self acquired property as so that is one important thing to keep in mind before we get to what are the daughter's rights in property now when the hindu succession act was brought into force in the year 1956 it under section 6 of that particular act for whatever reason the legislature only permitted property to go to the males in the family not to females in the family so let's say that you know there's a father has a son and a daughter 
that son has a grandson grandson has another son for the, you know for the son and the daughter the property of the of the ancestral property at least will only go to the son it will not go to the daughter and so on and so forth so basically property only came to the male lineage it only came to the male members of the family the property never devolved upon the woman of the family to begin with so therefore these women were so therefore women were not considered co-parsoners co-parsoners are people who have two features one they are members of the joint family property which women were but two they also had the ability to inherit ancestral property since women did not have the ability to inherit ancestral property from from 1956 onwards they were not considered to be co-parsoners and the hindu succession act also provides for different classes through you know who will who will be able to acquire property so it has class 1 heirs class 2 heirs and so on if there is anybody in class 1 class 2 heirs will not take and so women were not considered class 1 heirs so therefore if there was anybody else so for example in our case father or the son daughter if the father passed away since class 1 heirs the wife and the son are there the daughter will not take anything at all so this was the law from 1956 onwards but as you can see that this law is unfair why is it that property can only go to men and not to women this you know this whole system was discriminatory it went against you know gender you know with the gender equality and and so on so and also went against article 14 of the constitution of india which guarantees equality to all citizens of this country so therefore in the year 2005 the legislature came up with an amendment to the hindu succession act and they amended again they amended section 6 of the hindu succession act under which they said that not only the male lineage but even the female lineage all women in the property will also be able to inherit property from their ancestors this was a sea change in the way hindu law was understood and interpreted from 1956 onwards there were some states like andhra pradesh and i believe karnataka maharashtra who had their own state amendments who saw this discrimination much before the central government saw it for example i can tell you being from telangana the andhra pradesh as it was then before bifurcation to ap and telangana in the year i think 85 or 86 they had passed a law saying even women have equal right in the particular property with some conditions attached and that she takes up equal responsibilities and so on but this was but this was the law only in a few states it was not the law across the country but up with effect from 9th september 2005 onwards when the 2005 amendment to the hindu succession act came in force this is the law all across the country now that women are considered co-parsoners because they are not only family members but they are also considered class 1 heirs and they have the ability to inherit property from their ancestors but this amendment came with its own fair share of confusions the main one being for a woman to be eligible to get a share in the property is it important that the father should be alive on the date of the amendment on 99 you know 2005 which is when the amendment came into effect 9 september 2005 so let's say those so let's just go back to our example the father mother son daughter say the father passed away in the year 2000 now because the father has passed away in the year 2000 should this law be applied and let's say the daughter now after 2005 now she has a right in in the joint family or the ancestral properties and let's say the mother and the son are not giving her a share they're excluding her now let's say in 2023 the daughter now wants to file a case now can the son and the mother argue that look the father had passed away before this act came into force how can you apply law the legal position that was the pre amendment to a partition or a case that is filed post amendment post 99 2005 now this legal view you know this legal confusion went all the way up to the supreme court in in two separate cases on in one case the supreme court said if the father has passed away by by you know uh 9 september 2005 then in that case the daughter will not get 
even if he files a suit now in another case they said no no that is not correct yeah even it does not it does not matter if when the father passed away whether before or after if she files now she will be able to take uh, a portion or her share in the ancestral property there were conflicting decisions it was referred to a larger bench in a so a three judge bench finally sat down and decided the issue in a case called vinita sharma versus rakesh sharma the supreme court said it does not matter when the father had passed away whether he had passed away after the if after coming after the 2005 amendment came into force or before the amendment came into force for the simple reason that woman a woman becomes a co-parsoner or a class 1 heir on the day she is born she she it is not the date of the death of the father that is determinative as law even if a woman was born even before 2005 she will be entitled to a share in the ancestral property so that is basically the legal position now that a woman has a right an equal right in ancestral property that is left behind by her father but and this is a big but and this is what we see cases day in day out is that there is a exception to this rule there is one exception to this rule and this exception revolves around one date and that is the 20th of december 2004 if a particular partition had happened before 2004 and a woman was excluded from that partition then a woman cannot go back and challenge that partition so let's take our let, let, let's take our example father mother son daughter father passed away in the year 2000 and there was a partition that was affected in the year 2001 which is before december 2004 and in that particular partition the mother and the son partition the properties among themselves either through a registered deed or through a decree of the court or there's an oral partition but importantly it is supported by you know by by public record it is supported by the by records in the municipality where the name of the father was was removed and the name of the mother or the son were, were entered or if it's agricultural land in revenue records So even if it's an oral partition supported by documents, and this partition had taken place before December two thousand four, that in that particular situation, the woman now cannot go back and claim that she has an equal right in the property. Now, why is that? Because I mean, it's it's crazy to think that she has a right, but for partitions that are only taken place, she does not have a right. The reason being. the supreme court thought you know if we go back and we give women the right to e an equal share in the property what that will you know that will create a sea of litigation imagine the number of disputes that will come up within families where a partition had taken place 20 years ago 30 years ago where all the male members had taken female members were excluded today you go back and you unsettle these things you are going to create huge disputes between hundreds if not thousands of hindu families and the supreme court decided we just don't want to be doing that now if there was no partition before december 2004 then a woman is eligible to take an equal share in ancestral property that is the law of the land as on date i hope that was helpful thank you for watching